Good evening folks. I am going to be showing you today how to emboss this lion using the X-Tool F1 Ultra. This design is available on the Design Find website which is run by X-Tool. Um, this actual design comes with two parts. It is a front and a back. The back is an award. Um, this is basically made for challenge coins, things of that nature, and you can actually emboss this into one side and the award into the other side and then come back later and engrave things like names, first place, little Timmy, whatever you want to do. But for now, we're just going to be looking at the lion itself, so I'm going to go ahead and hide this, uh, this back object here. <clears throat> I might be using a slightly different version of the XCS software than you are. Uh, I'm filming this on the 26th of August, 2024, and I am actually using beta software from Xtool. <clears throat> when you watch this video, this may be this may be old. Who knows? But uh, anyways, so what I've done here is I've actually set up a scene, and you can actually see the build plate on my laser. And I have a 40 millimeter brass coin that I bought off of Amazon. And uh, just make sure you use solid brass. You don't use the uh, uh, the, the coated ones. There's got to be solid brass or solid whatever metal because that's what these settings are for. So uh, I've already saved uh, the emboss pass and I've also added a cleanup pass. Now if you'll notice, I have these grouped together with emboss pass on top, cleanup pass on bottom. Now that's important because when you process these files, you can actually tell it to do this one and then this one. You have to set the processing settings from processing path automatic to by layer. And then it will go from top to bottom. So that's how I've got it set up right now. <clears throat> so the first thing that's going to happen is going to emboss the lion. And then it's going to do a cleanup pass. Now uh, I've got a very thin coin in the laser at the moment. So the settings that I'm going to use are great for this thin coin. But if you want to do something thick, like a challenge coin, you might want to double up uh, on the passes. But anyways, let's go over the settings I've got here. Uh, first off, on the actual emboss pass, I've made a one-click setting called Brass Coin Emboss. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is set image to output. Laser type is going to be our fiber IR with 256 layers. That's the maximum number of layers. So whatever is black in here will be as deep as possible. And whatever is white will be as high as possible. Next up, I've set my speed to 625 millimeters per second with one pass at 200 lines per centimeter. Now, the reason these numbers are the way they are, let me explain these. Speed in millimeters per second is how fast the laser goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Okay. That can get all the way up to 10,000 millimeters per second. Now at that level, you're not going to see anything on a brass coin like this. I'm using 625 because that's what works very well. Um, pass means it does one pass and then it goes on to the next layer. If you are working with a thicker material or you want more depth, you want more of that, that effect, you could set this to two passes, three passes. It's up to you. Lines per centimeter is the resolution, right? So every time that laser goes zipping across, that is one line. And as it zips, you'll notice that it sweeps across the surface. And if it does 200 lines in a centimeter, that's your resolution. This number can get up to 300. I don't personally ever even bother with that. There's really no point. I max mine out at 200 lines per centimeter. You rarely will see detail better than that. And if you look, I did this when I when I did this design here. Now this wasn't done by this wasn't done by the AI system. This was done by me. And if you look, it's detailed. There's plenty of detail in here, whiskers and all, and it will catch that detail. Trust me. So, anyways. Um, Engraving angle is one that nobody seems to understand what it is. So let me explain what engraving angle is. Um, when you first start, you'll notice the laser is going to go back and forth as it moves down. All right? But after it finishes its first pass, the, this angle back and forth is going to rotate. And in this case, it's going to rotate by 75 degrees. 
So the next pass is going to be like this. All right. And when it gets to the end of that, it's going to rotate by another 75 degrees and be like this. Okay. I hear a lot of people say, oh, you should have that nice and low. Lower that to, lower that to 10 or something along those lines. Uh, I wouldn't do that. I would never do that. And the reason for that is if you get to, there, there are certain numbers that will actually create interference and like almost like a standing wave on this. So I try to avoid 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, things like that. But also if you get it at certain levels, you'll see a wavy pattern forming in the actual background on your, on your piece. And it's, it's unattractive. I find for 99.9% .9 of all of the things that I do that a 75 degree angle is perfect. Uh, frequency in kilohertz, as that laser is moving back and forth, it looks like a line to you. But if you were looking at it in uh, uh, super slow-mo, you would see it's a pulse of light, 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 a pulse of light. As it's moving, it's just pow, 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 hitting it really fast. Um, this is what controls that. Now, the lower the frequency, the harder it hits. That light is on for just a little bit longer. So if you crank this up, the light is going to be on for less time between pulses. Now, it'll pulse more times, but those pulses won't have as much energy, won't have as much punch behind them. I never mess with this. I always leave it at 30 kilohertz. Now, if you're doing something super deep, multiple passes, you might turn on descend at the Z axis for every however many layers. And what that does is as it's punching a hole, punching down into the design, um, the laser is going to slowly come out of focus because the distance between the laser and the surface has been increasing. So you would turn this on to lower that laser every now and then, uh, in this case by one layer, every one layer by 0 0.01 millimeters. So that's what that does. Um, mostly going to be for things that have multiple passes. So if you're not doing that, you don't need to worry about it. I'm still going to leave it on there just, just to be safe. Um, so, okay, now I've got this group together. We've got to make sure that everything is turned on. Circle set the output. This is going to be our cleanup pass. So this comes after it finishes embossing. And what's going to happen is it's going to engrave... I've got fiber cleanup set here. Laser type is going to be fiber IR. And I've cut the power way back to 20. And I've cranked the speed up to 4,000. And what it's going to do is it's going to have a line just go bzzz down the thing. And I've got three passes. So it's going to turn it a little bit and bzzz across here. And um, I've got this set for 200 lines per centimeter. Bidirectional, 30 kilohertz frequency, just like the other. And what this pass is going to do is as it's sitting here cooking, uh, as it's doing the actual emboss, it's going to leave junk on the surface of the brass, microscopic particles. And what happens is this cleanup pass comes back and just obliterates them. They, it just, they just get absolutely annihilated, uh, evaporated, and it will clean up. And it's actually kind of fun to watch if you catch it. Um, it just, it's like, I don't know, it's like a night and day difference. But anyway, so there you go. That's, that's how you're going to use this. Everything else is pretty much the same. You would turn your framing on. I always do framing as set to outline, uh, especially on circular things like this, because sometimes it gets a little difficult to line things up just perfectly with the, the big default rectangle. But, um, oh, let me put that back. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just line this right up on our uh, on our, our disc here now i do always recommend you do a frame before you process the reason being is the camera in this thing is a little bit off center right it's not straight down the middle because that's where the laser is and you can actually tell that by looking at these holes if you'll notice the holes up here are straight you can't see any of the walls right so that directly above this point is where the camera is down here all you see is threads and the walls of the circle. So if this were actually up here, you could line it up perfectly. But since it's right here, it's a little bit off. So always do a framing pass and, and just double check that everything is lined up. Um, other than that, just hit go to process. Let it send your file. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, the size of the file that gets sent 
is the number of layers, right? The number of times the number of passes and the resolution. So it's possible to send files that are in the gigabyte range if you're not careful. Um, so what I like to actually do is I will go into my device settings and actually export to an XF file onto a jump drive. And that is what I actually end up sending to the laser. Um, it's much quicker. It, this takes about 20, 30 seconds uh, versus the, um, the, the process of sending it over the Wi-Fi, which can take 20 or 30 minutes so anyways but there you go so uh, i'm going to cut away now and i will also include another video showing the actual finished product um and uh there you go hopefully this has been of use to you and uh check out um look for me in the design find website i put up crazy new stuff all the time i'm always busy this is what i do and uh, anyways if you have any questions uh, hopefully you can just reach out to me and I will be happy to help and I hope you have a wonderful evening Here's that finished coin Not too shabby and like I said, this is a very thin one, which is why I only did one pass on it, but um, I think it came out excellent